Every now and then, students can do amazing things to make their teachers cry. Hi, this is Rick at Knowable, and here are 10 stories of just that. Number 10. Sometimes, the best you can do is give someone something to keep their mind off things. In Albuquerque, New Mexico, high school teacher Nathan Niedick had been having a rough time of it. His wife had passed away and his young son had just been diagnosed with leukemia. Yet, he carried on, continuing to teach his 12th grade math students. And his students knew he was just being overwhelmed with personal situations. So they got him something, something he had wanted for quite some time, and even making off-the-cuff mentions of it to them. They got him a Nintendo Switch gaming console and a few games. His awesome students chipped in and got him something that many of them would like to have had themselves. Nathan found it very difficult to fight back the tears. His students got it for him because of their tremendous respect for him and hoping that it would help ease the strain he was obviously going through. Number nine. Sonia Romero also teaches in Albuquerque, but at an elementary school. And every morning she asks her students two questions. If they've eaten that morning and if they need something to wear. She asked them these questions because three quarters of the school students live in poverty and Sonia will do about anything to help them out. She's even the foster mother for two of her students. When word got out of her selfless acts to her students, she was given tickets to the Ellen Show and Ellen invited her on stage to talk about her story. Then a video montage of her students thanking her was played and Sonia, as well as Ellen, broke down in tears. Then Ellen surprised the good-hearted teacher with a $10,000 check for herself and another $10,000 check for Sonia's school to help the students. Number eight. Bill Slayton is an English teacher at a school in Charleston, South Carolina, and he's a big Duke University fan. He used to go to their basketball games all the time. But because of work and other family obligations, he hadn't been to a game in more than 10 years. But his students changed all that when they gave him a special present just before this past Christmas break. It was a couple of tickets to Duke's upcoming game against Florida State. Bill was just beside himself and had to compose himself before thanking his students for the extremely kind gesture. As of this recording, I don't know who won that game, but I sure hope Bill's Blue Devils came out on top. Uh, just want to say I have nothing against Florida State, though. Number seven. Everybody deserves a birthday cake on their birthday, don't they? In Burleson, Texas, high school teacher Kyle Simpler offhandedly remarked to his students one day that he couldn't remember the last time he got a birthday cake. Well, that's something that stuck in his students' minds. So when Kyle's 59th birthday was coming up, his students chipped in and bought him a nice birthday cake and presented it to him in class, along with singing happy birthday to him. He was extremely touched by the kindness and sincerity of his students. And through tears, he thanked them. Number six. Contrary to all those weird stories we heard while in school, teachers are actually human. Yes, they they really are. And when one of their pets dies, they're just as hurt as you or me if it happened to us. Students in Tanya Andrews High School class could tell she was extremely upset when her 16-year-old cat, Blondie, died. That kind of hurt hangs with a person for a while, even though they try not to let it show. But her students could feel that hurt too, so they decided to do something about it. When Tanya came to school one day not long after Blondie died, her students surprised her with balloons, flowers, cupcakes, and two tiny little kittens, hoping that they could help mend her broken heart. Tanya was overwhelmed by the gifts and she burst into tears at the sight of her new furry friends. Tanya said she could feel the love of her class in that moment. Number five. Margaret Gabica had spent the last 25 years teaching at St. Julian's Primary School in Newport, Wales, and now it was time to retire. And her students wanted to make sure she went out with a bang so they worked really hard over a three week period to rehearse something that they hoped would be very special for their teacher. On her last day, she was presented with a card, flowers, and some presents during a special assembly. Then she was escorted out to the playground and given a special performance that she will never forget. Her young student suddenly sprang up and gave her a flash mob dance routine of The Lion King's He Lives In You. It was quite a performance and Margaret couldn't hold back the smiles and the tears. Number four, a wedding is a very special time for a man and a woman. And for the bride, it just has to be perfect. It's her big day after all. Liz, 
a teacher for elementary students, had just walked down the aisle to meet her groom, Holly, and say her vows. Then, suddenly, children were singing to them. When she turned and looked up, she could see her entire class singing to her from the church balcony. It was a surprise Ollie had set up for his bride. She was overjoyed and tears flowed, and it couldn't have been perfecter. Uh, perfecter. Er, er, er. Okay, I may need to go back to school for that one. Number three. Okay, this one's a little different because the person featured here is not a teacher, he's a janitor. And aside from teachers, school janitors are about the most unsung heroes in our entire educational system. So, this one's for them. All those great men and women who do so much to keep our schools clean and running. At Garden City High School in New York, students noticed that the work shoes of their janitor, Brian Junk, were worn out. He'd worked so much in them that they were ready to fall apart. So, for Christmas, several teens at the school chipped in and bought him a nice pair of work boots. And, in the middle of the hallway, Several students presented him with the boots, and he started tearing up at the thought that those students would give their own money to make sure he had some nice work boots. I really wish I could go back in time and do the same for my school janitors. Of course, they don't make time machines that go back that far. Number two. 59-year-old choir teacher Gabriel Lynn Watson had just beaten that nasty cancer thing, and she thought she was attending a special meeting at Chicago's Morgan Park High School when, as she was walking with the aid of a cane down a hallway, one of her former students pops out and starts singing Amazing Grace. Then, he's joined by two more, as Gabriel Lynn slides to the floor, crying. Then, the song gets quicker, and more and more former students pop out of doorways and other nooks and crannies, singing and surprising her. All of a sudden, the music teacher who was again relishing life so much was surrounded by current and former students singing that beautiful song said Gabrielin after the incredible performance by her students. It's so great to feel loved and know that what you do matters. This video was so compelling that Kleenex brand tissues used it for a commercial. And finally, number one. His name is Manny Main, but his students call him Mr. J for some reason. He's a fifth grade teacher in Georgia and he's made quite an impression on his students with one going so far as to write him at the end of the school year just to tell him how much. When school was let out for the summer, Mr. J found this letter on his desk and shed many tears after reading it. It read, To Mr. J, thank you for being an awesome teacher and for being amazing. This school year was so fun and I enjoyed it because of you. I wish more teachers was like you. I will never forget you. I look at you like my dad. I never met my real dad, but it's okay, because you treat me like I'm your son. You make me so happy, always feeding me when I'm hungry and hug me when I'm sad. I will never forget you, Mr. J. I love you, and I will never forget about you. Love, Marcus. And now, as a bonus, here's a letter from a second grade teacher recalling how one of her students on Show and Tell Day explained to the rest of her class how her baby brother was born. This teacher had tears streaming down her face, but for a much different reason. I've been teaching now for about 15 years. I have two kids myself, but the best birth story I know is the one I saw in my own second grade classroom a few years back. Well, one day, this little girl, Erica, a very bright, very outgoing kid, takes her turn and waddles up to the front of the class with a pillow stuffed under her sweater. She holds up a snapshot of an infant. This is Luke, my baby brother and I'm gonna tell you about his birthday. First, mommy and daddy made him as a symbol of their love, and then daddy put a seed in my mother's stomach, and Luke grew in there. He ate for nine months through an umbrella cord. She's standing there with her hands on the pillow, and I'm trying not to laugh and wishing I had a video camera rolling. The kids are watching her in amazement. Then, about two Saturdays ago, my mother starts going, oh, oh, oh. Erica puts her hand behind her back and groans. She walked around the house for like, like an hour. Oh, oh, oh. Now this kid is doing this hysterical duck walk, holding her back and groaning. My father called the middle wife. She delivers babies, but she doesn't have a sign on the car like the Domino's man. They got my mother to lay down in a bed like this. Erica lies down with her back against the wall. And then, Pop, 
My mother had this bag of water she kept in there in case he got thirsty, and it just blew up and spilled all over the bed. Like, phew! The kid has her legs spread, and with her little hands, is miming water flowing away. It was too much. Then, the middle wife starts going, push, push, and breathe, breathe. They start counting, but they never got past ten. Then, all of a sudden, out comes my brother. He was covered in yucky stuff, and they said this was from the play center. So there must be a lot of stuff inside there. Then, Erica stood up, took a big theatrical bow, and returned to her seat. I'm sure I applauded the loudest. Ever since then, if it's show and tell day, I bring my camcorder, just in case another middle wife comes along. That's all for today. Let us know what you think about the stories in the comment section below. Don't forget to like us and be sure to subscribe for more stories like this. Get addicted to the good stuff.